in 2003, I started with absolutely nothing. And this greenhouse uh, had uh, a lot of old wiring and, and netting for growing carnations. And uh, one of the reasons for the greenhouse growers event has to do with flower growing in California. And it has to do with kind of showing people mostly growers who are not open to the public. And these growers are people who kind of have their secret thing growing, going, growing on. And people are wondering, what do they got in there? Are they growing cannabis? Or... Uh, <laughs> so, so what happened back in the early 90s is uh, the cocaine trade, one idea of trying to slow down the cocaine trade coming out of Colombia was to say, look, we'll give you money to start a flower industry down here. And, um, and well, of course, the Colombians said, oh, that's great. Yeah, and, and we'll also let your country subsidize flying flowers to America. And, uh, and what happened within a really short period of time, the flower industry in California was decimated. And uh, and there is there is a video of flower growers kind of telling their story of this online, uh, and it's I believe it's under the California Grown uh, thing. But it's basically if you Google the California flower industry videos on history, uh, you can find this. It's a fascinating video. I participated in this. And, uh, and so I'm one segment in, in the series. Um, and, and I was an anomaly because we are open to the public. Uh, and, and, uh, and yet they wanted me as part of it because succulents was such a happening thing. They thought I'd be a good draw to bring more people to this and to bring attention to the flower industry in, in America and specifically in California. And what this California Grown is about is if you go to the White House today and you see a big bouquet of flowers, it very possibly came from Colombia. And believe me, the cocaine trade did not slow down. They just started some other people in the flower industry. And, and uh, so now they have two industries and one is highly subsidized. And it really killed the American flower industry. And, and now there's a movement to try and convince people in government and the public to say, look, think about where your flowers come from. Uh, uh, Deborah um, Prinzing is a person who started the slow flower movement, and she's got a whole series of people who work with flowers all over the United States, and they're all locally grown flowers. And they're, many of them are kind of native plants to the area that they're working with. So depending on time of year, they're working with with cuttings and, and foliage that comes from the area to keep this long distance flying plants around the, the universe. Um, so I sold this business in 2014. I'm now retired. I wrote a book which came out this past January, which is here, and I'm going to sign books, whether you brought your own or you buy one here. Uh, I'll be signing them after my talk. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is show you uh, a little bit of the nursery, try to answer some of your questions, and uh, just give you a sense of, of what this is about. So in 2003, I had a store in Carmel called Succulent Gardens. Anybody ever go to it? Wind Shines, Other Man's Fountain, Statuary. It was a fun place. People came to chill there. Um, and, and I had been in the nursery business and in 1981, I opened that store as kind of a place to display succulents and turn people on to succulents and show my retail nursery customers good ways to display the material. And what happened was um, I, I was swimming upstream and it started in 72. And in 85, I said, you know what? I'm tired of swimming upstream. Nobody's interested in succulents. They just so I quit growing. And in 2002, I decided, you know, we need to bring plants back into the store. And so I looked around for a place. There was actually a place just down the street from me, uh, right on the ocean. Uh, but then shortly after I was looking at that, I found this. 
this was abandoned, this house. Uh, I met with the owners. It was in escrow to be sold to the school district, Monterey County School District. But the, the uh, realtor said, you know, it's going to take years for this to go through, even if it does. So you'd have, a, you know, three, four years easily to get yourself going. I said, that sounds good to me. Let me meet the owner. He gave me a price for uh, half the greenhouse, which was my budget. Nobody else was here. I cleaned out the greenhouse. I worked alone for a year to see, can I still do this? Do I know? It's been 18 years since I've been growing. And... And then everything just kind of went, whew. the succulent uh, identity just started really catching on. And it, it, this was before the drought was really a big issue, before the cost of water was such a big issue. It was more designers were kind of uh, having some fun with succulents in all the, the fancy magazines and that. And here I was, a guy growing these plants so people could see them large and small and on a mass scale. And I worked alone for about a year, and then um, I started, I hired one guy, and then I hired another. And, and there was a guy using these houses up here to grow. He was a propagator, he grew kind of ornamentals, woody ornamentals. And he didn't need all the space, so then I moved into the next house, and then I moved into the next house. So I took over the property. And so uh, this is what exists today. The idea of succulent gardens has been to show people how to use succulent plants functionally, landscaping, container gardening, like other plants. And so that was kind of the idea of what I was trying to uh, do for people so that they could learn more about using them. I also did things, how many people saw the globe? A few of you. Was it worth seeing? Yeah. Uh, uh, so the globe, I did I did a lot of vertical, and I did vertical back in the 70s, and I was in Sunset Magazine for doing what I called living pictures, and so I'm kind of this guy who looked into the, excuse me, looked into the future and, uh, and uh, did things that not many people were interested in then, but they certainly are now. So when I got the nursery going... I was able to build up enough stock that I could do over-the-top things. The globe took 20,000 plants. The cube, which I did two years before that, took 30,000 plants. So you have to have a lot of plant material and specific types of plant material to do these kind of things. Uh, if you Google. The purpose of the book is to show you examples of landscapes and containers, to show you some project ideas, fun things to do with succulents, to show you... Uh, what plants I like to work with. I had to narrow it down to a little over 200 varieties, so I think there's 203 plants. And it shows a photo and it tells all the things you should know about a plant. And that has been missing with succulent plants because succulent plants weren't looked at as functional plants. They were more collector plants. People kept them on the patio in little pots and they had one of this and one of that and one of that. And I like using 50 here and 20 there and 30 there and, and doing more mass. Uh, planning kind of things. So I did a lot of things at shows to demonstrate to people some of the possibilities and to get people excited about succulents. And and again, that's what Succulent Gardens was all about. So when you walk around here, there's landscapes that I put in and that they've put in since I sold the business. Um, and there's there's masses of plants in the greenhouse, so you see 100 or 500 or 200 of a variety, and you get a sense of scale, how big these things get. And when you see a label, it's got information on it that is, that is useful when you go to plant it in landscapes. And if you drive from here to, through Santa Cruz or down through San Luis Obispo and Pismo Beach or Southern California or San Francisco, go down... 19th Avenue, you see succulents are being put in all over the place. Why? One, they're low maintenance. Two, they're, they're fascinating in their shapes and forms and colors and texture. There's probably, in this area alone, there's probably five, six hundred varieties easily that will grow here. And the form and color and texture can be used to create all kinds of different looks. So that's kind of what the succulent plant thing was about to me, but they're also, by nature, they are low maintenance, 
They use little water. They're very efficient at using, collecting, storing water. In the same regard, same thing with fertilizer. They're very effective at using fertilizer efficiently. So do you water succulents? Yeah. Do you fertilize succulents? Yeah. But much less than most other plant material. So one of the things I try to get across to everybody is succulent plants are just plants. All of these things are the same things you have to do with any plant material. So if you're a good gardener, if you've worked with plants over the, over the past years, whatever you've learned applies to succulent plants. That doesn't mean they're not a little bit different. They don't want to be overwatered. They don't want to be drowned. Some plants take tons of water and they, on a day like today, they're going to wilt because they can't get water fast enough from their root system up into the leaves. Whereas succulents, they're fine. They just kind of sit there going, well, I might get a little tired and weepy because it's so hot, but tomorrow I'll be fine, or even tonight. Or, or if they start to dry out, they may get a little shriveled and, and soft, and you water them, and within hours you see them pump up. So uh, I'm going to take about 30 minutes to walk you around the nursery, uh, and I will try to answer questions along the way. Is everybody good with that?